What's up? It's your boy Carcino here, and let's talk about it, man. The retirements of two champion fighters. One, Vladimir Klitschko, who gave fans one of the greatest heavyweight fights they've seen in years after giving their fans quite a bit of duds in his career. He went out with a bang. Vladimir Klitschko dominated the heavyweight division, him and his brother. Even though people will argue that well, there wasn't a lot of talent there. There wasn't the heavyweight division, wasn't what it used to be. They still did their part by going out and winning fights. I mean, they sold out arenas whenever they fought in Germany. They even came to the United States, beat whatever kind of challenger we brought towards them. And we thought had hope the Klitschko's beat him up. But Vlad was looked at more as the failure, as the strongest fighter, but more of the failure of the crew. While his big brother Vitaly got more of the fame and the accolades. You know, he was the skilled boxer and, you know, everyone like, man, you know, you're stronger than your brother, but your brother is, uh, but, you know, He's got more boxing, more technical skills than you. You're more flat-footed and just strong like an ox. And you would never be champion like Vladimir, I mean Vitaly. So Vladimir had to show and prove his mantle. He had to make a name for himself. And after early losses to Lamar Peterson, I mean, not Lamar Peterson, but, uh, oh, man, how in the world I'm going to forget that? How can I forget his name? Layman Brewster. Huh? How I'm going to forget Layman's name? You know I'm sleepy. Layman Brewster in Chicago getting blasted out the way he did. And just collapsing from exhaustion and couldn't continue to fight no more. And I think it created an atmosphere where people were just disgusted with him. And thanks to Emmanuel Stewart and him making that decision to trust Emmanuel Stewart and stick with him, Emmanuel knew how to mentally deal with him. He was totally different from Vitaly, who was just had a very commanding attitude, very alpha male attitude, where Vladimir was more of a beta. He was much more emotionally unstable as far as confidence. And Emmanuel Stewart knew how to increase that confidence to get him to perform. Now... Everyone is saying that Vladimir Klitschko is probably going to go down as one of the greatest heavyweights ever, probably greater than Vitaly. Um, even though Vitaly had a longer winning streak, Vladimir stayed in the game a lot longer while Vitaly, as they call him in Russia, he really, you know, just kind of went away and did went political. And came back, then went political, and he just, you know, kept doing his thing. But once Vlad got there, he was able to sustain for a long period of time. He just never really had that one fight besides David Hay to really submit him as the man. And when that stage was met and everyone thought David Hay would be the one to push him, we saw David Hay wasn't really the guy we thought he was when he was going into the fight that he was more David Hype than David Hay. And, and Klitschko really just did enough to survive in that fight and didn't really seize the moment. But in his last moment as a boxer, he went out fighting. He used all his skills, all his knowledge, 
and he just fatigued near the end. He couldn't really get to the scorecards, but he did the best he could against Anthony Joshua. Youth outlasted skill. He dropped him with that steel hammer of his, and we will never forget Vladimir Klitschko. Thank you for your service as a fighter, and many blessings to you as you go up on your new journey. Timothy Bradley. Timothy Bradley, man. What, what more can we say about Timothy Bradley? I mean, we'll see a lot more of him because Bradley is going to be around boxing a lot longer. As far as a broadcaster, he really wants to get himself going as a, you know, as a name in this figure and stay around it. And he wants to help young fighters come up and give them advice and critique fights. He's one of the hardest underappreciated fighters in history. He's one of them. He didn't have the best skill. But he was probably one of the best fighters out of the entire bunch. All Tim knows is working hard and getting the most out of yourself. And he willed himself to fights. The Provodnikov fight, people just say, oh man, that just showed his heart. That showed Tim Bradley at his best. That was his best fight. Tim Bradley fought the dumbest fight you could fight that night. But he earned the respect of the fans by fighting that dumb style. Tim Bradley has always had heart. And he's proved it time and time again by going to the wall, going to the, to the brink. He kept coming back. Every time you say, oh, well, he's going to lose now. He's done. Tim Bradley kept coming back. He's beat Pacquiao. He didn't get the credit for it. He beat Marquez and didn't get the credit for it, really. And got his rematch with Manny Pacquiao. And lost that one. But he had a lot of victories. Beat Brandon Rios. I mean, Timothy Bradley, to be a guy that used to fight in a scrapyard. They didn't even have, they had a ring put up on in a scrapyard where the lumberjacks was. <laughs> there was like festival seating at a boxing fight, which is dangerous. People could take a chair, lift it up, and throw it. This guy was not known in the amateurs, really, as a superstar fighter. He fought in the amateurs, and he was just a hard fighter. People remember Tim Bradley in the amateurs, and he was never really that great. It was his will and his desire. He was going to be the best conditioned guy there. You're not was going to out-condition Tim, Timothy Bradley. And he is a true example of what a champion is. Champions work through, through everything. And he beat people who were more talented than him, that were stronger than him. He just out-willed them. He had more willpower than any of these guys out there. Out of, and to say who should have got the fight between uh, Berto and Timothy Bradley, I felt Timothy Bradley deserved that shot. I would have loved to have seen that, but we knew we couldn't get that due to the fact of the circumstances between promoters. But that would have been amazing to see. Because Timothy Bradley was going to do one thing. He was going to fight. He was the only guy I knew. I knew the prediction. If I picked Tim Bradley was going to lose, 
he always wins. He was the probably the biggest underdog in almost every fight he went into. Tim Bradley was the underdog. You can rest assured, Timothy Bradley was the underdog. And he came out on top. I was like, there's no way he could beat Kendall Hope. And he won the fight. Then they was like, well, Lamar Peterson is going to crush him. Because Lamar's going to get to his body, and that's going to be it. Timothy Bradley boxed it on the outside and beat him up on the inside and hurt him. Timothy Bradley outwilled his opponents. He he did everything that you would have want from a champion. And, you know, he just never really could get that, you know, the shine that he deserved. You know, I, I think he's a five-time world champion. Five times. But with one draw, two losses on his record. Timothy Bradley is our hardest working man <laughs> in boxing. You know, he's going to leave with a loss to Manny Pacquiao on his record, but hey, he's the guy to stop the Manny Pacquiao train. He was the first one. Before Pacquiao got knocked out, he was the first guy to stop the train right in his tracks. And then it started derailing from that. But then you look at the Devin Alexanders, the Joel Casamayor, uh, the Provodnikov win, Marquez win, Diego Chavez fight. I mean, this guy has done so much. The Bahama Cherry Bomber, Peterson, Hope, Junior Witter. I mean, you talking Hall of Fame? He's in there. I'm out.